Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment offered by Mr. McClintock of California, page 6, line 23, after the dollar amount, insert reduced by $0. Page 150, line 9, after the dollar amount, insert increased by $114 million. The gentleman from California is recognized for five minutes on his amendment. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. If the House is to live up to the promises the Republican majority made to the American people to bring spending under control, some tough choices are going to have to be made. This amendment, however, is not one of them. Uh, this is about the easiest choice that the House could possibly make, to put an end to the so-called essential air service that lavishly subsidizes some of the least essential air services in the country. This program shells out nearly $200 million a year, including $114 million of direct taxpayer subsidies to support empty and near-empty flights from selected airports in tiny communities, most of which are just a few hours' drive from major airports. A reporter recently investigating this waste took one of these flights from Eli, Nevada, and was the only passenger on that flight. Our constituents paid $1.8 million for this air service that carried just 227 passengers during the entire year. Eli is a three and a half hour drive from Salt Lake City International Airport. Thief River Falls, Minnesota is considered an essential air service airport despite the fact that it's just one hour and nine minutes drive to Grand Forks International Airport in North Dakota. Hagerstown is just 75 miles from Baltimore, but subsidizing their air flights are considered an essential air service. Now, it's true there are a few tiny communities in Alaska, like Cake's 700 Hardy Souls, that have no highway connections to hub airports, but they've got plenty of alternatives. In the case of Cake, Alaska, they enjoy year-round ferry service to Juneau. In addition, Alaska is well served by a thriving general aviation market and the ubiquitous bush pilot. Rural life has both great advantages and great disadvantages, but it is not the job of hardworking taxpayers who choose to live elsewhere to level out the differences. Now, apologists for this wasteful spending tell us that it's an important economic driver for these small towns, and I'm sure that's so. Whenever you give away money, the folks you're giving it to are always better off. But the folks you're taking it away from are always worse off to exactly the same extent. Indeed, it's economic drivers like this that have driven Greece's economy right off a cliff. An airline so reckless with its funds as to manage its affairs in such a ludicrous way would quickly bankrupt itself. As we can plainly see, the same principle holds true for governments. This was a temporary program set up when we deregulated commercial aviation during the Carter administration. It was supposed to last a few years to give rural communities a chance to adjust. That was 34 years ago. In 2010, in one of the most decisive congressional elections in American history, voters entrusted the House to Republicans with a crystal clear mandate, stop wasting our money. Last year, the House responded to this mandate by voting to eliminate essential air service subsidies in the FAA reauthorization bill. So what's the response of the House Appropriations Committee? They do not eliminate funding for this wasteful program. They do not reduce funding for it. No, they increase funding by 11 percent in a single year to a new historic high. Mr. Chairman, our nation is borrowing 40 cents of every dollar that it's spending. It has lost its AAA credit rating. Its taxpayers are exhausted. Its treasury is empty. Its children are staggering under a mountain of debt that will impoverish them for years to come. And yet the House Appropriations Committee, in defiance of last year's decision by the House to eliminate this program, has just voted a double-digit percentage increase for a program that flies near empty planes around the country. I think we can do better than that. I offer instead this amendment to stop fleecing taxpayers for this expensive folly. 
I believe that House Republicans will ultimately prove themselves worthy of the trust the American people have given them in this perilous hour in our nation's history. I believe that House Republicans can summon the fortitude to save our country from financial wreck and ruin. And I offer this amendment to put that faith to a modest test. I yield back. Gentleman yields back.